Caribou! Another new YouTube channel, Joey Only up here in the Caribou Mountains, Wells, BC, 3,953 feet above sea level. I'm your Caribou Weather Dude YouTube weatherman. That's me, of course. So, news today. Um, not related to fire. Highway 1 had a fatal accident this morning, so it's been shut down. Highway 5 has been shut down, and that's in Fraser Canyon. Highway 5 has been shut down due to wildfire, though the rumor is it may open this afternoon. We're waiting to hear on that, but as it is, that cuts out two of the options to leave Vancouver, uh, lower mainland. So that's one of the problems coming into the weekend we're facing, but another more pressing one is that 1,500 people at least have been evacuated from Anaheim Lake today. Evacuation orders have gone up. Those fires are still being very active and torturing, despite the fact that our heat has come down a little uh, today and will. Other problem is we got a whole bunch of new thunderstorms. So the heat's dried everything out for the last uh, several weeks. And we've had all summer to dry out on top of that. Now we have the risk of lightning increasingly over the next bunch of days, possibly as long as from now till Wednesday. We could have nearly a week of thunderstorm activity. Of course, it's not going to start crazy. Uh, there's not going to be um, a big storm show today. I don't think we're going to see severe today. The moisture isn't available for storms to really get themselves to that next level. But does that mean dry lightning is a potential uh, threat? Yes. There it is. This is bad oh my gosh. Anything could happen. Get off. Wow. I'll watch the video later. <laughs> up in this. Hit like, share, subscribe, tell a friend if you can. Become a channel member, join the Patreon. I'm needing lots of support. I'm still on bizarre Facebook restrictions where they took down my post and said, we're putting you on a 30-day ban from using groups. And I said, wait a second, my post didn't violate anything. I just said Graham Greene's a great voice actor and I love him, a huge fan. And then so an hour later, the robots say, oh, you're right. Your post didn't do anything wrong. We have restored your post. But they didn't take the restrictions down. So I'm guilty of nothing. But I can't post to Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers groups. So if you see this and you're part of uh, Weather Watchers, maybe share it there for me if you can, because that is so frustrating. That cuts out uh, access to like 44,000 people that are part of my audience. Ah! Now it is already 1230 in the afternoon, so keep that in mind. Area A today up that Stuart Cassiar Highway could be the place where we see some stronger thunderstorms, maybe up to one centimeter hail, wind blowing 80 kilometers an hour. Uh, but I'm not like... I'm not anticipating anything crazy happening. Could see some flash lightning on Vancouver Island. Absolutely. Could see some up the coast mountains, even ranging all the way down to, say, Manning Park. Air quality statements are now in effect for pretty much all of British Columbia. Look at that. It's uh, it's bad. It's bad. Numerous active fires in the province and widespread smoke are going on. Uh, smoke conditions can change quickly. Metro Vancouver region is uh, continuing an air quality warning. They had some of the worst air quality of a major city on planet Earth. Uh, not that long ago, yesterday, I think it was, Metro Van and Fraser Valley are experiencing hazy conditions due to wildfire smoke. Wildfires compared to smoke in the region include those just east of Hope near Whistler and a large complex of fires in the Caribou region, but also addition to fires from the U.S. The U.S. fires are coming from Washington State over the border, and no one's complaining. Keep your smoke on your side of the border. Heat warning still remains in effect, actually, today and tonight for the Fraser Canyon. I thought this might get dropped today, but it's not. It's not. Overnight. Night, uh, lows near 18 expected upper 30s temperatures today still a risk a ridge of high pressure anchored over bc's bringing very high temperatures heat affects everyone especially seniors people who live alone with pre-existing health conditions heart disease respiratory disease people with schizophrenia depression anxiety people with substance use disorder people with limited mobility over on the alberta side smoke 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 air quality warnings air quality warning up in the northwest territories where there's been a lot of of fire torching. Meanwhile, big low pressure system Ontario is uh, somewhere up here right now. It's bringing cool air down into Ontario. But we got severe thunderstorm warnings in effect there right now. That's going on at this time. Very strong wind gusts. And further north of that, severe thunderstorm warnings. So we got a bunch of uh, severe warnings there. We got 100 kilometer hour winds gusting off Lake Huron and Georgian Bay. This morning into the evening, very, very windy in Ontario. And then special weather statement for 70, 90 kilometer hour winds possible in southern Ontario. I did an interview this morning in the Ashcroft Cash Creek Journal, the newspaper. 
and she wanted to know about the all-time record that was set for the month of September in Canada in Ashcroft on Wednesday of 40 uh, 0.8 Celsius, and well, we had a good talk about that. Uh, still breaking temperature records yesterday, tomorrow, although cooling down us a little bit. Litton only got up to 38.8 yesterday. Smithers up to 28. Summerland 31. Tatlioko 32. That's why fires kept torching there, kept torching there yesterday. Uh, some more Manitoba setting low temperature records. Uh, down below zero at Fisher Branch, almost two Celsius below at Gillum. Wild. Winnipeg, 0.4 Celsius. They've been keeping records in Winnipeg since 1885. So while it's extremely cold, record-breaking cold in Manitoba, they're on the backside of that storm system in Ontario while we remain in this warm bubble and even the Yukon setting some record temperatures there. CarMax got up to 28.3, man. 28.3 in CarMax. That's far north to be still getting temperatures pushing towards 30. As you can see, fire activity is still happening today out in the Chilcotin. Not much of a reduction there. You can see the darker orange is mainly today's burn so far. We've not hit the heat of the day yet, so we've not seen uh, um, possibly how far things could go nuclear. But Anaheim Lake right now, uh, 1,500 people being evacuated. We're very concerned for you. We're hoping for the best for you. Send our love. Send our support. Uh, they'll be probably going to Williams Lake, I'm hearing. Uh, fire near Manning Lake. Uh, Manning Park, sorry, is torching still pretty good, but that road remains open. Hoping to hear some positive news on Highway 5 today, and then somewhere near Yale, we had that fatal accident this morning. Have a look at BC Wildfire Service's provincial situation report. Only nine new fires in the last 24 hours. That's good news. And 126 declared out in the last seven days, 16 out in the last uh, 24 hours. So we are still getting new fires, but we're seeing more getting put to bed, then we are seeing a rise up. That's going to possibly change with the lightning coming. The province continues to see temperatures above seasonal average from an upper ridge persisting through today. Through uh, Though high smoke concentrations may decrease temperatures in some areas by blocking incoming solar radiation. The smoke is expected to linger over the next 48 hours until an incoming upper low moves into the province from the Pacific. The weather system is expected to bring increased chance of lightning with minimal precipitation and gusting winds, which will increase the potential for new ignitions. The lingering smoke is expected to cause limited visibility in many areas today, which may temporarily impact safe operations of aerial resources. Smoke alters local weather patterns by adding, uh, much like a cloud cover, reducing the amount of sunlight that reaches the ground, helping humidity levels to remain a little higher. This has helped in some cases. In some cases, it helped, it helped here in Wells, for example. And just to remind you that uh, of the active wildfires still right now, 77% have been lightning caused. And that is not unusual, especially as you get to this time of year. But sometimes the spring, you'll see more human fires than lightning caused. And same within the fall uh, when there's not much for lightning around. However, uh, you get into the dead of the summer and you got that convective weather. And BC tends to have a lot of thunderstorms these days. And uh, a lot of our fires are caused by lightning. It's the number one cause. So every time someone's like, who's out there causing all the fires? Be like, lightning man is. Now let's have a look at convective available potential energy. As you can see, along coastal BC and Vancouver Island is where that Cape value is the highest. That means clouds will convect upwards, exploding towards thunderstorm status if they uh, are allowed to achieve it because of natural factors. So if uh, a cloud can get itself together and get organized, the potential that it can convect enough to create a thunderstorm is there. So where we look in this afternoon, say start at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you're really looking this uh, area of the Chilcotin where the fires are is where things are probably going to light up. My concern is that there is not much rain expected in any of these thunderstorms. These are going to be dry storms, right? So we're going to have that potential for new fire starts in the Chilcotin, up that Tweedsmere Park area. Some of these thunderstorms could torch off down the line a little bit, maybe even a few flashes on Vancouver Island. I'm not anticipating a great amount of that. Uh, one thing I'm concerned about is, do we get a wind event at some point if this upper level low moves in? Mark and I were talking about that in the show last night. Uh, there's signs that that could happen. There's signs that that could happen in our near future. Okay, let's look at Saturday thunderstorms. Um, I'm not seeing a big wind event, though, until sometime late next week. And I'm hoping that that coincides with the change in the weather pattern altogether. There will be lower temperatures and maybe we'll be getting the wind, but we won't have the extreme heat and dry conditions to go with it. That's the hope. My hope is that we don't get the wind event until, say, Wednesday or something like that next week. But uh, this crapshoot, you know, that's that's wishful thinking right now. Saturday afternoon, a lot of thunderstorms down by Manning. Coca-Hala getting some fresh thunderstorms. Again, West Caribou out to 
towards Nechaco Reservoir, Chilcotin, some of the same areas that are burning right now, looking at seeing more lightning, taking more strikes. Now even up the Peace, Fort St. John, the mountains up there, North Rockies, looking at some, Mackenzie side. Uh, it's basically like a bit of a, a bulge that goes from Fort St. John to Tacla to Burns Lake, Stewie, and then down into South Chilcotin. And could you see thunderstorms pop up outside that range? Yeah, absolutely. Even here in Wells, we could see that in the afternoon before it starts making its way uh, more easterly. This thunderstorm pattern starts to kick off, becomes more and more active over the next bunch of days, and then eventually we find it uh, makes itself more to the eastern side of the province. So that is our concern that still on Saturday, how much rain are we looking at? Not much. These are dry thunderstorms. These are thunderstorms that aren't... uh, you know, except for this guy, maybe here, it looks like it's got some rain inside it. I mean, mostly we're expecting thunderstorms that are, uh, have enough moisture to create themselves, but not enough to, to make a whole lot of rainfall in them unless they full out dump their guts at the end of the day, which sometimes they do. So we're looking at this potential on Saturday. We'll be talking every day about thunderstorms now on the channel for the next bunch of days. Every day we're going to be here talking about who gets thunderstorms and who doesn't. So you can start preparing for these, you know, warm temperatures still, even at six o'clock at night, we're up near 30, the low pressure becoming more dominant in the interior of British Columbia. Of course, our thunderstorms will start to peter off after 6 p.m. as they do. We're late in the season, so the sun goes down quickly and we come to a nighttime a little bit earlier, things cool off a little bit earlier. So that's all good news. And in the process of doing that, uh, our storms will get choked off a little earlier. Whereas, you know, in the dead of the summertime, you see thunderstorms still generally being pretty healthy, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night before they start falling apart. We could probably see that happening earlier in the day because there's the cool weather uh, that will set in at night for a lot of places. However, keep in mind that while we remain these really high temperatures, we're getting fall-like cold weather butting up against us. And that's what's going to help create a lot of this instability. Do we see lightning throughout the night on Saturday? Yeah, I believe so. Vancouver Island, Coast Mountains, up in the peace uh, between Fort John, you know, 101 or somewhere like that. You might be seeing these thunderstorms that make their way over into the Alberta side sometime in the middle of the night. A Sunday morning, you're waking up and there's still lightning flashing uh, in Vancouver Island, off and on intermittently uh some thunderstorm may get itself organized there and if it's if it can be organized at six seven in the morning who knows where that energy will uh will come that day and you know an early morning thunderstorm is always a a good candidate to make a late afternoon severe thunderstorm so on sunday we're seeing that uh thunderstorm activity really relegated to southern bc on the bottom side of the low pressure system that means everywhere in southern bc could see uh risk of lightning that day and more rain coming in with it as we get later in the weekend so that's the good news although temperatures still pretty high still active fire temperatures at least we're looking at uh, as we get come into the pattern more rain being present in the pattern this is only at one o'clock in the afternoon on sunday where are these thunderstorms going we got a couple hours to build up there it looks like washington state's gonna be taking a lot of lightning that's uh very dark very dark so very uh densely um very dense clusters of thunderstorms possible there new fire starts new fire starts so we see those storms petering out again as we come into the evening last enough uh, fairly long in the southern interior there on sunday what about monday are we back to thunderstorms on monday well yeah in uh, many of the same places. Again, though, this is more on the east side of the province now. That uh, disturbance that first starts on the uh, west coast, slowly making its way. It doesn't look like near as active as a day on Monday. That's some good news, I guess. Things will cool off a little bit. On Tuesday, we're still seeing thunderstorms in southern British Columbia. A little bit more rain in the province, though. Uh, temperatures down a little bit, so we're going to see some positivity, at least, you know, when it comes to fire weather as we get into this pattern. But I'm concerned about this. See this See this ridge right here? See this? What that's doing, it's blocking this 977 millibar low. That's forecast so far in the models to maybe make itself apparent there on Wednesday. This is the one that I'm thinking could be a real... Uh, a real wind story for us later next week, maybe Wednesday. No, maybe Thursday. So, I mean, this is far out. Uh, do we see that potential for wind event still like a proper wind event? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, there's risk that you see a bit of wind this weekend in the piece. Yeah. But I'm talking about an actual real deal wind event. When are we going to see it Thursday? I don't know. That low establishing itself over in the prairie side sometime between Wednesday and Thursday. At some point, you're going to expect a cold front to move through, and it's going to whip up the winds, man. It's going to whip the winds up. But yeah, we're looking next week at more stable 
Uh, still at the high end of seasonal, but much more stable temperatures. Pretty warm in Alberta come Tuesday. Go to Wednesday, look at our temperatures. Again, 26 in Vernon, 23 Williams Lake. I mean, that's still very warm for September, but it's not like no one's going to lose their mind over that. I'm like hitting 40.8 Celsius or whatever we just saw in uh, Ashcroft. Like, absolutely extreme. So you can see we're still still trending a little bit warm through a lot of the next week. Do we have that return to the late season heat? Possibly, possibly this low here is going to help feed more up as we come to the middle of the month. Maybe the Alberta is the recipient of us more than we are. That remains to be seen. That's a long ways out. But lightning, 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 lightning this weekend. It's hard to say it 50 times fast. Say lightning 50 times fast. Lightning, 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 lightning. It's really, it's really hard to do. Okay, uh, hit like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, keep supporting the channel. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Keep safe. Hearts go out to everybody in Anaheim Lake. Hope you have a good um, go of this. Hope nothing bad happens to town. Hopefully, the weather can come on side eventually before that fire can do anything. Uh, but it's bad. It's bad to have a weekend start with people getting evacuated. And it's bad to have a weekend start with fatalities on the highway, closing highways down. Uh, there's a bit of chaos in British Columbia this weekend. We'll do our best to keep you up to date as we can. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye now.